Sorry, something went wrong. Proverbs chapter number four. Proverbs chapter number four. 23, verse 24 and 25, 6 and 7. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. Keep your foot from evil. One thing that God wants us to guide our life against is the ways of the devil. God wants you and me to guide our life away from the ways of the devil. Therefore, it is required. It is required for anyone among us to be very careful how she or he conduct a life. Hmm? Very, very important. Very, very important. The Bible says that we must be vigilant. The word vigilance is defined as an action of a state of keeping careful watch. Keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible for one to be endangered. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is what the Lord is calling us. Keeping your heart clean is your responsibility. The doorway into your heart is in your hands. The keys to the doorway into your hands, into your heart is in your hands. And therefore, it is your responsibility to pay extra attention. To watch over them closely. That you don't give that access to any person. Why? Because to the degree that you give that access to anyone to trespass. is the degree that your life is going to go through. You mess up highly. If you allow things that are not healthy to enter into your heart. If you allow things that are not healthy to enter into your mind, you endanger yourself. You endanger yourself. It is your responsibility to guide your heart against imposters, against people that will trespass with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the protection of our hearts the protection of our heart is in our life. Everything that we protect, we defend it. Everything that we protect, we cover it up. So let us be very careful. When the Bible says that guide your heart, meaning protect against anything that will trespass into the doorway, into your heart. Let us be very careful. Beloved, we need divine wisdom. Sometimes people are saying certain things, we need to reject them. How can we protect it? That is what we want to deal with. with. How to guide our heart against the evil plots of the enemy. We need to put protective mechanism. Don't accept everything that somebody is telling you. Don't embrace anything that you hear people saying. Don't take into heart what people, the way people treat you. Not every person will treat you fairly, but be careful. What people do to you is your responsibility to receive and direct it. What happens around you, it is your responsibility to receive and direct it. Be careful. Never allowed people's feelings and people's desire to mislead and misguide you. Guide your steps against that. It is your responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the life that there are so many competition. And things are competing against us around the clock. There are many things that are willing to influence our life and control us. We receive many information within a day. 
I got loads of friends and groups on the WhatsApp. And a day, everybody, everybody among the groups that I have is talking. So you ask yourself, how many people can you listen to? How many messages can you read? And those messages, not all of them are good. Not all. To be honest with you, the messages that you receive within a day, what you need among them are very few. Some who are prompting you to do things that you ought not to. Some who are suggesting, providing, and giving you alternative. Some who are sending music, videos, naked nudity. Some who are giving you links to go and watch things that are unproductive. It is your responsibility to guide against all these things. It's not all that you receive within a day. It's what you need. If you want to make heaven, this is your responsibility. Make a deliberate effort to protect what comes into your life. To protect what comes into your mind. To protect what comes into what we allow to go through within our environment. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that we have a very limited time. Jesus can come at any time. And when Jesus comes and meets you at a point of sin, there will no repentance. There is no forgiveness on that day. The day of rapture, there will be no forgiveness. There will be no forgiveness on that day where the Lord is coming to collect his people. When he closed the docket in heaven and coming down, no one will be forgiven on that day. Therefore, let us be very, very careful how we live our lives every day. Some of us, we talk to ourselves, we have stopped it, but we go back and do the same thing over and over again. Let us be careful. Time is no more. Let us be very careful. Protect yourself from demonic suggestion and thoughts. Protect yourself from feelings and emotions that takes you far away from the presence of God. Reject every ungodliness around you. Refuse to allow those things to bring change. Demonic information will cause you to lose heaven. Protect yourself. It is your responsibility to build protective mechanism. And how can I do it? You need divine wisdom. You need divine understanding. You need discernment to discern what is the purpose of this message. What is the purpose of this information? What am I receiving? What can I do with that information? Every information that you receive, ask yourself, is it good for me? Does it promote my health? Does it promote my well-being? Sit down and reconsider them. You see so many things on the radio, sorry, on, on t television, those of you who have TV. Those who don't have TV, you watch things on Facebook, on social media. You need to ask yourself at any given point of time, this information, what can I do with this? It is your responsibility, darling. It is your responsibility to protect yourself against the firing darts of the enemy. Sometimes we look, sit back and say, why God didn't intervene? God will not intervene. God wouldn't intervene when K, Adam and Eve Satan invaded their territory and asked them to eat the forbidden fruit. God wouldn't intervene. Why? He has given them their legal right to protect themselves. So guide yourself against any intruding spirit. Guide yourself against that. It is your responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful of what you allow to dominate your mind. Be careful. You must be very careful. You have your thoughts you have your mind, you have your ability and your faculty. It is your responsibility to do so. Hallelujah. It is your responsibility. And therefore, we must be very, very careful. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is clean, whatsoever is holy. These are the things that we should allow to dominate our mind. Mm. What should I allow to dominate my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We need to allow things that are pure to dominate our mind. As a born again believer, weigh your thoughts, weigh your feelings, weigh your emotion, and weigh your reaction. Because you are a victim of your own actions. You are a victim of your own ways. You are, you can become a victim to your thoughts. So we live to guide your hearts against the evil deeds. You need to build a protective mechanism around you. And that protective mechanism that I'm talking about as Christians, it should be the word of God. We should think peaceful. All the time we should think peaceful. Some people may not come in the way that we want, but we should think peaceful. We should think peaceful. And as much as it is within our ability, we should think peaceful. We should think lovely. We should think lovely. People may not love us, but we should think lovely. We, the way we respond to our enemies should be that God who is leading us. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother Ben. Those of you who are listening, please share for me. I can't share now. I have a just little time to sail away. So we should, what we use our mind, because there is a coordination between the mind and the heart. Yeah? So be careful. Don't give too much assignment which are unhealthy to your mind. So Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4 talks about this. And the peace of God who surpasses all understanding will guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. Let, let's go back a bit. Let's go back a bit. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guide your heart. Verse 6, he said, be anxious for nothing. Don't use your mind to think on things that you're supposed not to think. Don't feed your mind on things that are unnecessary. Things that you don't need, don't feed your mind on them. Be careful what you give your mind to, please. Oh, how can I guide my heart against the foreign data Satan throws at us? Be careful what you give your mind to. You are responsible for that. To be anxious for nothing. It's not everything that you need to know. It's not everything that you need to know. Everything. Some of you, you are so inquisitive. Everything that is passing by, you want to know. Don't give that assignment to yourself. There are things you need to let go. Let go of it. Always running after things. It's unhealthy life. Don't live that life because it's unhealthy. Hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Mm. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything that you are doing, let your prayer be more. Where you can't handle it, say, Lord, please take my mind. Please take my mind. Where you can't hold on, say, Lord, take, take control. Give every problem to God. Let God take control and move away from it. Don't handle things by yourself as a born again believer. Don't handle them. Don't handle them. Present it to God and live your have a peaceful mind. Always see to it that your mind, God is occupying it. Not your worries, not your trouble, not things that happened yesterday. Don't safeguard your mind. Safeguard it. Present your case before God and leave the rest on God to, for God to solve it. When people are bringing that thing back, let them know that it's no longer your issue. That thing we have closed the dockets, we've sealed it, we stamp it, it's over. Philippians chapter 4, the verse number 7, and the peace of God, did you hear that? After you have prayed and submitted everything to God, you have the peace of God. That surpass all understanding. So be in an environment where your mind is at peace. Don't go to bed where your mind is not at peace. Straight away, throw the burden. People chuck their things on us, friends and relatives. 
that share their uh, 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 their unhappiness, don't receive it, darling. Don't receive it. Let go of them. Throw them. Don't receive the excess luggage of people. Don't receive them. <laughs> I was, uh, I think last year I was going to Ghana, and uh, I don't know if I was deceived or I didn't read the terms and condition of that airline very carefully. And I think the luggages that I I, 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 I took was too much. It was too much. So when I read at the airport, they said, oh, no way. Oh, no way. You can't go with it. You need to buy a bag. Beloved, that was hard. You know, somebody is traveling to Africa. You've calculated your money. So at the airport, I went and buy a bag, a very small bag, which cost me 30 pounds. Literally, that bag may cost me 10 pounds. I had to buy for 30 pounds. And that wasn't enough. I packed and packed and packed and still it wasn't enough. So there was a brother that was passing by. I said, bro, uh, don't you have any hand luggage? Can you help me with the hand luggage? He said, no, sir, brother. I've given my all so I can't hold yours. That taught me a lesson. On that day, nobody will carry our burdens for us. So be very careful. Be very careful to carry people's burden. And I learned a lesson that on the airport, you don't carry people's burden. We are at the final critical point, final checkup, final checkpoint. Do you know what somebody has put in their luggage? Don't carry somebody's luggage. Guide your mind and put it at peace. When somebody wants to throw things that he doesn't like, don't take it. I think I have, I've, I've spent a, a time here, so that, let me move forward. Be careful what you allow to control your mind. You need a peace of God that surpasses all understanding and guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Then he jumped to verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think of these things. Think of this thing. It is your responsibility. It is your responsibility for what you allow to control your mind. Be careful. Be careful. Um, according to um, Psalm 119, let's go there. Psalm 119, the Psalm writer said, A word will I hide in my heart, verse 9 to 11, that I may not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let not wander from thy commandment. Don't let me wander from thy commandment. This is what the Psalm writer said. I feed my man with the word of God. I come close to God every day and walk according to his word. And I plead to God that nothing would seek the commandment of God out of my sight. I meditate upon his word. I follow after it every day. What can a young man do to keep his way pure? By observing himself according to the counsel of God. Keep yourself pure by the word of God. Your life can only be purified by what God says. Not what people say. Not what people think. Not what people feel. Don't live with the feelings of people. Live with what God says. The reason why many of us, our lives is being taken astray by the enemy is that we allow so many things to control our life which are very unnecessary. We allow so many things to control our lives which are very, very unnecessary. Be careful. Guide your life against rubbish guide your hearts against things mm? store up the word of god in your mind feed your mind with the word of god what you are going to think consider if it is coming from god have a pure thinking genuine thinking clear thinking think positively have positive thoughts never have any ill thoughts concerning somebody Somebody does anything bad to you, please have good thoughts about him. 
Mm -hmm. We need to come before God every day having our church clean. Why? Because when we stand before God, Hebrews chapter number 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is quicker and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides and set asunder. The bones, the marrow, the word of God is able to penetrate and descend our hearts and see what is inside our hearts and our mind. The thoughts and the feelings of emotion are judged by the word of God. Allow people to do whatever they do and let God be your judge. Fill your mind with the word of God. Allow the word of God to govern your mind. Allow the word of God to govern your sight. And allow the word of God to govern your steps. What you see, what you hear, where you are following, and what you are feeling, let it be governed by the word of God. You'll be free. You'll be free. Beloved, God's word has power to bring any change in our life. There are dynamics in the word of God that Christians we have not come to evaluate. But the days we come to value the word of God, it will change us and bring us into an area that we never thought that we could be. Guide your mind against everything by the word of God. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what is inside your hearts, if you want to know what is inside of your hearts, think about evil thoughts for five minutes. If there is no regret, if there is no ill feeling, then you know that your heart is not registered. <laughs> Bring evil thoughts in your heart for three minutes. And if something is not pinching you, no, don't do this. Mean that your heart is still not clean. The moment evil thoughts, the moment evil feeling, the moment evil emotion comes into your spirit, straight away there must be the Holy Spirit that will safeguard you and say, no, no. The Bible says that out of our heart proceed abundance of so many things. <laughs> That's brother. Brother Ben, that is how you have to control your heart. If you can give your thoughts, if you can give your mind for, for dirty thing and smile about it, and you cherish it, something is wrong. Something is wrong. In Matthew 12, verse 20, 34 says that out of of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. As they say, that is who they are. As people speak, that is who they are. And what people do reveals what is deposited in their hearts. Let us be very careful. When your mind is clean, your conscience are clean, your feelings are clean, your thoughts are clean, your ways are clean. Clean your heart, it is your responsibility to clean, to clean your heart. Spiritual house cleaning is an individual Christian's life. God has plans for us, but those plans cannot work unless we surrender our ways to God for He to lead our ways. Let us be very careful. How can I keep my ways pure? How can I guide my Heart, how can I guide it? Number two, number two, you need to resist and diffuse any difficulties. Stand still and see that anything that comes on your way comes not to destroy you, but comes to repair you. Every difficulty that you face in your life should become a challenge for you. Confront what confronts you. Confront what you are afraid of. Other than that, things that you term as difficulty will weigh you down. The Bible said that God will not allow anything to happen to us which is not common unto man. But everything that happens to us he will make a way. Therefore, confront your difficulties. Don't allow your difficulties to control you. Don't allow your difficulties to give you a different direction. When we are confronted with challenges, when we are confronted with new things in life, the tendency that we give up is very high. 
How can I deal with challenges in my life? Evaluate every challenge that comes into your life. Evaluate. Where you can't work with it, seek for wisdom or counseling. Quickly. Quickly. Solve problems as soon as possible. Earlier when I was talking to my wife, and um, there are some people that there are things that happen to us that instead of uh, approaching or confronting the situation, we just allow things to go just like that. You are in the church, somebody does something that you don't like, approach the person ASP. Challenge challenges, confront confrontationals, because they are designed to destroy you. Many have lost, many have lost their glory without confronting things that challenges them. Confront it. Somebody does something that you don't like. Don't allow those things to take hold of your life because the next five minutes that you allow those things to take you into different direction that you want, you don't want. Challenge your challenges in life. Oh, listen to me, sister. Challenge it. Things that we see that it is difficulties. God allowed things to happen, not because he's not God, but sometimes he allowed things to happen to test us and to see our values. Hmm? Things happen every day. It happens every day. There was one book that I read from, I think, Robert Schuller. It's a tough time never lasts, but tough people do. Tough time never lasts, but tough people do. God has granted it the grace to go through everything. But that grace works for those who made themselves available for the grace to work for them. Mm -hmm. The scripture teaches us that all things in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 work together for our good. So anything that God allows to happen, it is for our good. Amen. Amen. When you understand God, you will stop asking God, why, 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 why? Why do you allow these things to happen? Things happen. Anything that God allows to happen, it happens for our good. So it is my prayer that you challenge difficulties in your life. Challenges. Don't allow things to happen just like that. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the Lord said, I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you, the thought of good. The way that God allows his thoughts to come into our lives, sometimes we have no idea. Sometimes we try to search for answers. We try to see, to think why God is allowing these things to happen. You might not know, but it comes to, puts you at the right path. Joseph fall into the hands of his wicked brothers. At the end of the course, he said, whoo. My brothers thought that they were selling me, but they were pushing me into my destiny. Everywhere you are, it is not most of your good choices. Sometimes people have to push you away. Sometimes people have to push you away. I've been there many times that people reject me. Whenever I see people rejecting me, I see that it's the hand of God. Because sometimes when you become complacent, sometimes when you become used to environment, the tendency that you remain there and be destroyed is very high. Challenge the challenges that comes on your way. Don't see it as a wicked thing at all. Hallelujah. Confront them. Embrace what you need to embrace. Correct criticism. Correct. Wherever you are afraid, seek for help. Where you don't understand things, approach the person. In our Christian life, maybe... Sometimes we overlook things. Sometimes we overlook things. People act by the way they feel. People relate to you the way they feel. So when you don't understand things, go to people. Brother Gabriel, you did these things. I don't understand why you did that. Oh, I'm sorry, sister. I wasn't aware. We hurt people unaware. We offend people sometimes unaware. Sometimes, in as much as we try to keep our way pure and, 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 and to correct our way, still we fall 
Why? Because people think differently. People see differently. People reason differently. And by so doing, we offend people every now and then. Beloved, let us, let us stand with God. Let us stand with him and walk with him. Sometimes, sometimes we need to embrace the pains and the agony. Sometimes it is good for us. God will never allow anything to happen to you as a born again believer, which is not good for you. So sometimes you need to discern what you are gaining, not what you are losing. I've been saying this over and over again in the time past. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down and ask yourself, what am I going to learn out of this? What are the benefits of the situation that I'm going through? What are the good side of it? Jesus Christ suffered, according to Isaiah chapter 53. He was rejected and despised by men. A man of sorrow and acquaintance with grief. He was ridiculed. He was betrayed, beaten, humiliated, abandoned, and falsely accused of things that he has not done. Because people didn't understand him, they always put him into things that he haven't said. The Bible said that Jesus was tempted in many cases, yet he refused to sin. Don't allow what people are doing to you to change you. Change what people are doing. Change it. Stand tall. That's what I'm saying. Confront it and overcome it. Confront the challenges and you overcome that. Confront it. You must be tough. Because tough time never lasts. Be tough with a situation that Satan throws at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God says that Jesus was tempted at all manner of life, yet without sin. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. He was tempted in all manner of life, yet without sin. Have you been tempted to that standard? You must be. Basically, basically, my understanding of temptation is that when you have some desire in you, you need to hear that, sister. You'll be tempted. You'll be tempted. But you need to stand firm. You need to stand firm. Temptation are not serious if you don't have any desire, if you don't have any interest. The reason why the temptation that came on Jesus, Jesus was able to overcome. He has no desire. He has no feeling in them. He was hungry and Satan said, turn the stone into bread. He said, what for? What for? It's you who is going to feed me. Get behind me. He took him into the high mountain and said, you see, all these things before are mine. If you bow before me, they'll be yours. Satan said, how dare you? You were a thief. Satan knew who Jesus said. Jesus knew who Satan was. And Satan knew who Jesus was. He said, you were a thief. You were a liar. You've never spoken true before. So when Jesus approached Satan, he approached him as a liar. He approached him as a thief. He approached him as a murderer. In John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not to see, to kill, and to destroy. So when Jesus was confronting Satan, he knew his identity. And you need to discern sin. You need to discern the challenges. They are there not to destroy you, but they are there to protect you. Hallelujah. If you are able to do all these things, I tell you, life, life are so good and so cool. Hallelujah. The reason why Jesus was able to overcome sin, because he knew, he knew the level that sin was trying to bring him. And therefore, you need to have confrontation that will preserve you. That will preserve you. When you solve problem on side, it is always good. Ladies and gentlemen, difficult times are bound to come. Difficulties are bound to come at all times. But the wise people know how to go through difficult times and not to give themselves to things that the enemy has plotted to destroy them. Any time that Satan designs something for us, he designs for our destruction, but God will turn it for good. Why? Because all things work together for our good, for those who 
are called according to, according to the will of God. He has called us into so many things that sometimes we don't know. So people that come on our way, who disagree with us, who fight us, who push us away, they offer us another opportunity. But in such situation, we think that it is God who have rejected us. He hasn't. As he went through suffering time, he will allow his children to follow or to go through in the same place. And therefore, in tough time, what must I do? You need to stick to the leadings of God. I want to give you the last points and that we close for today. A tough time, listen to the voice of God. Seek the counseling of God. Mm -hmm. I know there are certain times you don't feel that God is there. You don't feel God. You don't feel the presence of God. You don't feel like listening to God. You don't feel like listening to uh, any message. Sometimes you feel that God doesn't listen to your prayers. But I tell you, don't stop there. Trust in the Lord always. Trust in the Lord and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Proverbs chapter 3. <clears throat> in all your ways, trust in him. Trust in him. Verse 5, 6. Lean not into your own understanding. Follow the leadings of God. See God and ask his direction. This is the time that we are most vulnerable. This is the time that we are most vulnerable. Guide your hearts. And this is how to guide our hearts. Number three is to look for the leading of God. Number one is to build protective mechanism around us. Number two is to confront the challenges that are fighting us. And number three is to lean to God. Follow the directions of God. God has weight. Problems has weight. But let the weight of Christ come upon you. He said, come unto me, all ye are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Come. And take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is lighter, and I will give you rest. Ladies and gentlemen, in every situation, every difficulties, they differ from one to another. But those who continue in the Lord, in their tough time, lean upon God, seek the ways of God, and produce godly character, they build up godly heart. Their faith becomes strong at the end of the journey and nothing can take them from the place where Christ has planted them. Every challenge that comes on your way wants to uproot you. But you must be deep-rooted. You must be deep-rooted. And the way you can be deep-rooted is lean upon God. Lean upon God. Therefore, no wings... No wings of difficulties can move you. Mm? God has made us different. Intellectually, physically, psychologically, emotionally, we look different. Yet he has called us to follow him in the same way. So as we differ from one another, the way I see things differ from the way my wife sees things. My point of reason is totally different from her point of reason. So when sometimes we are discussing something, the way she will come with her views, I'm so amazed. I said, wow, why didn't I think like that? <laughs> why didn't I see it that way? That's why I love discussing with people all the time. I want to see people's view. I want to hear people's view. I love it. Because I learned also how people think. Sometimes the way you are thinking is totally different from the way somebody, a very rare cases. That your thoughts will meet with somebody because God has made us different. What you call problem, somebody will call it it's an achievement. It's an opportunity. Oh, it's an opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has called us to pursue different things entirely. Only in him, we all pursue different things. We all pursue different things. When we come to the Lord, some are musicians, some can pray more, some can fast more, some understand the word of God more. I know some people have gone to Bible school, yet they can't preach. They can't even teach. 
<laughs> know what God has called you to do. And what God has called you for will determine the problem that you need to solve. What God has called you for will determine the problem that God has called you to solve. So don't try to say, why me? Why will God allow this thing to happen to me? Why is only me who is suffering that sister? You have a high call. And those who have a high call, they have a high responsibility. Amen. Those who have high callings, they have high responsibility. Therefore, lean unto God. Seek him and draw closer to him. Allow him to speak to you. Allow him to speak to you. Hallelujah. Why? Because he will show you the great and the right way to respond to the situation where you are going through. The reason why you need to lean upon God is he is the one that will show you the right way you need to respond to it. Hallelujah. Depend upon God for the right response. Sometimes we fall so deep down, we are so crushed in circumstances or in tragedy that our heart is broken. We feel disappointed. There is a disappointment that sets in. Sometimes we refuse to trust any person. We don't trust anybody. We don't trust anybody. Sometimes we ourselves, we don't trust ourselves. Have you been there that you don't trust yourself any longer? Oh yes, I've been there many times. <laughs> I didn't trust myself. And that is the highest point, that you don't trust yourself before sin. You don't trust yourself. So a thing that I know that can put me down, I don't trust myself. I know that that sister is a threat to me. Oof. No, no way, sister. We can't be together here for 30 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour. No, please. But Gabriel, you're not saved yet. No, I'm not saved yet. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here. I'll be in heaven. Those who are saved, they are in heaven. <laughs> I still have the tendency to fall. I still have the tendency to fall. Let me tell you my secrets. If somebody insults me, I don't like it. If somebody take advantage over me, I don't like it. If somebody disrespects me, I don't like it. If somebody throws something at me, if somebody wants to cheat me, I don't like it. Am I saved? <laughs> Thank God that you are saved. Oh. As for you, they can throw everything on you. You can catch it. But me, I can't. I don't want to fall. I don't want to sin. I don't want to lose heaven. And I believe let that thing be your measurement. Stop thinking that you have already have it. Stop it. Because that is self-righteousness. And that is the highest level of our falling. Let me stop with this. Never think that you can do anything with your own strength. Run to God whenever it is necessary. Give your mind to God and give your heart to Christ. And let the Lord help you to produce the nature that he's built on you. Let me end here and I'll come back tomorrow morning and give you more of that. Father, here we are, oh God, in your presence. We love you for such a great honor and a great privilege to advise my brothers and sisters and show them the way into your righteousness. It is my prayer that let this word bring somebody closer to you this evening. Show them how much you love them. Reveal yourself to them. Thank you because you love them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Beloved, that is what Sam may permit us to have. God bless you. God bless you for watching. In as much as you can share it with somebody for me. Those of you on uh, Zoom, I'm going to post your share for you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. God's willing. I love you all. Good night. Bye.